Yes, people, Gabriel here. Welcome to episode two of season two. The weeks are flying by, right? One moment, it's like, geez, new week, let's get it. And then before you know it, bam, it's Friday. It's mad. But one of the ways we can try and stay on top of the speed of the times we're in is by having a good balance between our work and our rest. So yes, you guessed it. Today's episode is gonna be on work and rest. Work, rest rest work where did we start these are both such important topics and we very easily could have done a separate video on each of them but you can't really talk about one without the other so we thought we'd bless you with two in one so firstly to get an idea of what work and rest should look like for us as christians we don't need to look any further than our creator god who modeled this for us right at the start of the bible in genesis Genesis 1 to 2 give us a window into the work and rest rhythms of God. As we see him in these chapters working for six days and then resting on the seventh and making it holy. The seventh day of rest then became part of the Ten Commandments. And for us in the new covenant, we are not bound to the law or to a specific day, but the principle of rest and Sabbath remains. As we observe these, we make room to spend unhurried and prioritized time with Jesus and be refreshed and be restored by him. It's in his presence that we experience true rest for our souls and minds, where we can receive of his peace and love afresh. But it's vital that we find an appropriate balance between our rest and our work. God didn't create us just to sleep, be half-hearted with our work, or to be lazy. In fact, Genesis 2 tells us that after Adam was created, he was put into the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So really, We've got no excuse to be lazy and not work. This is part of what we were created for. And the reality is, there's some jobs we're going to enjoy doing more than others. But we must always remember to give our all and honor God in the work that we do. So some of you might be thinking, cool, that's great. But how do I actually put this into action in my own life? If you are thinking that, don't sweat, because we're about to tell you. If you weren't thinking it, pick, because we're going to tell you anyways. Jokes aside, here are our top five tips on rest that will not only help you to rest better, but help you get the most out of your times of work too. Sophie, over to you. Thank you, Gabriel. So what I'm now gonna do is take us through five practical tips on how you can rest well. The first tip is something that's really obvious and it's something you will have heard so many times before, but yet it's something so many of us really aren't good at. And that's because tip number one is to get a healthy sleep pattern. Sleep is so important for our bodies and our minds because it gives us an opportunity to recharge properly. If we have not enough sleep at night or inconsistent sleep patterns, it can hurt us and stop us from feeling and acting our best. It's suggested that you get at least eight hours sleep a night, but anywhere between eight and 10 is ideal. So help yourself and get into a good sleep pattern. You will feel so much better for it. Our second tip, tip number two, is unplug from technology. We live in a world where we are constantly bombarded by so much, so many apps are battling for our attention. So it's so important that we take some time away from that technology. It's essential to unplug from our phones and our gadgets and plug into God to be refreshed by Him. This is going to look really different for different people. Maybe you want to take two hours every day where you're not on your apps, where you're not looking at your phone or your laptop or your iPad or whatever devices you have. Maybe for you it's setting timers on your apps so you don't scroll endlessly for hours. Before you've even noticed it, four hours has gone. Setting a timer can be a really good reminder to take some space away from them. Maybe for you it's not going on your apps or on media at the weekends and taking some time away from those screens to fast from media, to take some breathing space. Tip number three is find a hobby that you enjoy and is restorative. Find activities and hobbies that are fun. Instagram shouldn't be the only way that you unwind. There's so many ways you can do this and so many different hobbies. I couldn't even think to list them all. But some things you might wanna do is going on walks with your family, reading, baking, maybe you play an instrument or you like to play sport, whatever it is, 
try and find something that you find enjoyable and is restorative. For me personally, I've started doing cross stitch since lockdown, something I never thought I would say, but I really, really enjoy doing something different. And it's a hobby that I think will probably stay with me out of lockdown. So find a hobby and enjoy it. We're on to tip number four, which is cast your cares onto God. Jesus is the only one who brings us true rest. He brings us rest for our minds and our souls. And the Bible reminds us of this because it says to cast all our cares onto Jesus because he cares for us. Now you might be saying that's well and good, Sophie, but how, on, how do I practically cast my cares onto God? You promised practical advice. I would suggest getting a piece of paper and a pen and writing out the things that are worrying you, the things that are playing on your minds, the things that stop you from having peace. Write them down and instead of just leaving them on the paper, sit with that paper in front of you and pray through those worries. Ask God into each one individually, hand them over to him and say, God, please take control in these things. And then once you're finished, take that piece of paper and destroy it. That might be rip it up, it might be scrumple it up, it might be put it in the bin, whatever it looks like, get rid of it because you've handed those worries to God because he can take them. Cast your cares onto God. And then for our final tip, tip number five, it's to be still. We find great rest when we take time to just be still. Psalm 46 verse 10 tells us to be still and know that he is God. When we make room for God and sit in stillness before him, it gives us a fresh perspective on who we are. It gives us a fresh perspective on our situation and it gives us a fresh perspective on who he is as well. It can be hard to do this and it might be the one that you find the most difficult because it can be hard to block out the world. And as I already mentioned, media and apps are constantly trying to get our attention. So my advice would be to put your phone on Do Not Disturb and put it somewhere you can't see it and play some instrumental worship music. You can find some really good instrumental music tracks in our devotion playlist, which is linked below in the description box if you want help finding those. So that is our top five practical tips. Tip one is to get a healthy sleep pattern. Step two, unplug from technology. Step three, find a hobby that you enjoy and is restorative. Tip four, cast your cares onto God. And five, be still. That is all from me. Back to you, Gabriel. Thank you, Sophie. Such helpful tips there to help us rest better and in turn have healthier rhythms in our lives. Well, that's all from us today, guys. We hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. But before we go, regardless of how your week has been, allow me to leave you with this. My God is a big God, he's a great God.